Yovanka and I are very concerned about the issue of cannibalism. I love Rudy, Eugene. Cannibalism is a serious issue and is very dangerous to the health and well-being of both the cannibal and the victim. Uh, we were boyfriend and girlfriend for four months. I only saw him smoke a marijuana cigarette once. Thank you very much for coming today. I'm attorney Gloria Allred. And with me is Yovanka Bryant. I'll be making a statement. Then Ms. Bryant will be making a statement. Uh, she will not be answering questions. Uh, I will take a few questions. And uh, we're ready to begin. Recent, recently, Yovanka Bryant, who is 27 years old, of Miramar, Florida, was shocked to hear of the horrific and tragic incident involving her boyfriend, Rudy Eugene. Mr. Eugene was shot to death by police because, according to reports, he refused to stop eating the face of a homeless man. Yvanka had been Mr. Eugene's girlfriend for the four months prior to this tragedy. She had no warning whatsoever that Mr. Eugene would have ever engaged in cannibalism. Yvanka is a single mom with three children, ages 11, 8, and 3. She is a billing specialist for a certified public accountant. Had she had any indication that Mr. Eugene could or would engage in an act of cannibalism, she never would have allowed him around her three children. After the tragedy, Yovanka was contacted by law enforcement who were investigating this incident. She provided them with all of the information that she knew that was relevant to this inquiry. She was not and is not a suspect in this matter. Although Yovanka originally planned to maintain her privacy about her relationship with Rudy Eugene, she changed her mind and has decided to speak out. She contacted me because she thinks it's important that the public know the truth about Rudy Eugene and her relationship with him. It is important to her that she's able to clear up the confusion that has existed in the press. Prior to today's news conference, she has not given any interviews to the press on or off the record about Rudy Eugene. In addition, Yovanka and I are very concerned about the issue of cannibalism and the number of cases that are being reported in other states and countries, such as Alabama, Canada, Maryland, Japan, and Sweden. Jokes are being made about this issue on late night television. For example, last night Adam Sandler did a comic bit about it on Jimmy Kimmel. But cannibalism is a serious issue and is very dangerous to the health and well-being of both the cannibal and the victim. Even the Center for Disease Control has weighed in on this important subject. It is very important that the social taboo and stigma that have long been attached to this subject continues and that society condemns cannibalism rather than trivializing it or glamorizing it. Also, it's essential that the public be clearly informed of the risks and use or misuse of certain drugs which could cause humans to engage in cannibalism. We are hopeful that as a result of this terrible tragedy that there will be an important discussion of these issues and that Yovanka can help the public understand the dire consequences of cannibalism for its victims. Yovanka Bryant is still in a state of shock that Rudy Eugene could have done what is reported because that is not the Rudy Eugene that she knew. I commend Yovanka for her courage in speaking out today. It is her hope that by sharing information about Rudy Eugene that the public will be better informed and better able to engage in a serious discussion of this terrible tragedy. And now I present Yvonka Bryant. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I would just like to say thank you for coming today. I would like to say that I love Rudy, Eugene. Rudy and our relationship started in March. Uh, we were boyfriend and girlfriend for four months. We saw each other frequently. We text each other, took videos of each other with my family, and communicated until the day before his death. 
My purpose for doing this interview is to shed some light on who he was to me and my family. It is not to excuse his actions or to try to justify them. My relationship with Rudy began in March of this year. The time Rudy and I spent together, we took my kids out to the park, we dined in restaurants, we had family game and movie night at one of my relatives' house. We often engaged in debates over what God really meant to people and who was the biggest Miami Heat fan. Uh, he enjoyed sports. He played football with my brother and cousins every Saturday afternoon. My children used the nickname for him, Uncle Beard, when they talked about him. Rudy never drank alcohol or used drugs around me. I only saw him smoke a marijuana cigarette once. One thing that I loved about Rudy is how he talked about his family. He loved his mother and his grandmother very dearly. The care that he expressed for my son, the friend he became to my brother and cousins, and the man he was to me will never be forgotten. I felt safe with Rudy. In his presence, his smile alone just uplift my spirits. I could always count on him to encourage me. I truly did not have a care in the world when I was with him. Rudy had dreams and goals in life. One of his goals was to start his own car detailing company. Uh, he also dreamed of having a family life. Life as we know it has changed for us. The fact that I cannot pick up the phone and hear his voice is the hardest part. Words alone cannot express what Rudy meant to me and my family. We all miss him dearly. Rudy and I never discussed cannibalism or voodoo. We watched Creflo Dollar Ministries every morning. We also had private Bible studies together. We spoke about marriage and I thought that he would be a good father for my children. There was no warning signs. I am devastated by his loss and my heart goes out to the homeless man who became an innocent victim in this tragedy. I wish the public knew Rudy the way I did. I believe that he would never no, no, have knowingly and intentionally inflicted harm that, um, like, uh, I'm sorry, intentionally inflicted harm that he did in the most, and most likely he was given a drug without his knowledge. Um, I am looking forward to learning the results of the toxicology report, and I hope that no one will ever have to go through and suffer what Rudy and this victim did. Thank you. And we have distributed this photo of Rudy and Ivanka together. And we have many others that evidence their relationship and many witnesses to their relationship. Yes? Ms. Albert, why are you representing uh, as I said, she contacted me, and she wanted the truth to be known. Uh, she was being confused in the press with another individual, and she wanted the truth about Rudy to be known and the truth about her relationship with him to be known. She also felt that this issue of cannibalism is an extremely important issue, and she felt that she wanted to talk about it. Are you planning to? No. Ms. Ulrich, clearly Ivanka had nothing to do with what happened last two weekends ago. That's correct. Can you help us find the new value then in her press conference today? Well, it's up to you to decide if there's news value in her discussion about who Rudy Eugene was Why and she? what her relationship with him was shortly prior, before his death. Ms. Ulrich. Yes. She never saw him use any drug whatsoever in her presence. Except As she indicated, cigarettes. he smoked marijuana once, and that was it in the entire four months of their relationship. But in retrospect, does she now know of cases when he wasn't around her that he might have been using other drugs, bath salts? She only knows what happened in her presence, and that's what she has indicated. Okay, 
why did she finish? Why did she terminate the relationship with him? And did he she she didn't terminate the relationship with him. He was shot to death. Can you, can you so she was still the relationship was, was, still was still continuing. When was the last time she, she saw him? I think she said the day before. She communicated with him the day before what was that his death via text. What did he say? Well, I, we're not going into that now, but we have texts from him to her. But I'm, nothing about cannibalism, so voodoo, or drugs. So these reports, uh, I think there was in a local newspaper that uh, interviewed a woman who was supposed to be the girlfriend and said she spoke to him that morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. A local yeah, a newspaper interviewed someone who was not identified and identified her as the girlfriend that was not Yvonka Bryant. Is Yvonka that is what we are trying to clarify today. Does Yvonka Bryant know this other woman? I work for that newspaper, and we know her identity, and she is not Yvonka Bryant. Thank you for that did, uh, confirmation. Did Yvonka know this other woman? Did she know what kind of a relationship Rudy had with this other woman? We're not here, we're not here to comment on any other person other than Rudy Eugene. Except you said she's being confused with somebody else. That's correct. Rest, so this is a relevant question. Well, I, I'm not saying whether it's relevant or not, but I thank you for your confirmation that she is not the person that gave an interview to your newspaper. Well, why don't you make that other woman be someone who also had a relationship with Rudy Eugene? You'll have to ask whomever you would like to ask about any other relationships that he might have had. Are any of the children, any father, any of the children? Or? No, he did not. Did he ever mention anything about a possible mental illness? directly or maybe his family to you? You know, she's not going to disclose what he said, but she had no indication that he had any mental illness. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Well, there were reports today that there was a Bible found up as well as the Quran and the Quran. Did you read the Quran? Well, uh, they read the Bible together. And the Quran as well? Did uh, I, they didn't. Yeah. didn't read the Quran. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, they read, bo they read both together. Can you talk about that? Uh, no, except that obviously it, religion was important to both of them. That's why they watched the ministry every morning and read the Bible and did private Bible study together. What was her reaction when she saw this on the news, what had happened when they released the identity of this man? She was absolutely shocked. Had no in, she had no indication that this could or would ever happen. I, I'm not clear on what your question. You know, I don't have any comment on anything that she what might have said. I, I, I'm not here to to comment on anything that she might say to to confirm or deny or comment on it whatsoever. I've had no communication with that individual, so we have no comment on her. This is about Rudy Eugene. That's all. Okay, well, uh, what, uh, I mean, you have what you have. I can't confirm or deny whatever prior information you have about Rudy Eugene. Was he ever violent with you? Or he was never violent with her, nor with her children. And had he been, there would have not been a relationship that continued. Isn't that just, right? just to double back on this. He was very kind and very sweet as far as she was concerned. Sorry, you said she is not going to file a lawsuit. That's correct. I wonder why she would then hire a lawyer to represent her. I thought that I covered that no, a couple times. Didn't. However, I'm happy to cover it again. This is a high-profile case. She wanted to have the truth come out about her relationship with Rudy Eugene and to have people understand who he was from her point of view, from her knowledge, from her experience. And that is why I'm here, to help her to have a voice and to help her to tell what her relationship was and was not. There are a lot of lawyers. Since Rudy South Eugene Florida. can't speak for himself. There are a lot of lawyers in South Florida. Billing clerk for a CPA goes to a celebrity lawyer in California. 
What's the bottom line here? Book contract, magazine, made for okay. TV, movie? Okay, I guess uh, I'm not sure if you're, uh, you know, if you have any knowledge that I've represented victims I in cases for 36 years. And often, but women, often, victim. often, well, she's, she's suffered the loss of someone that she truly loved. And so she is a victim in that way. She and her family have suffered a loss. And, you know, there are a lot of women, young women, older women, who would like to have a voice, who would like to have support, who would like to be empowered, who would like to speak out rather than suffering in silence. And I'm happy to have them seek my support and help them to have that opportunity to speak out and to tell their story in a way that is important to them. All she had to do was pick up the phone and call anyone in the local media. Well, uh, all I can voice. tell you is that they contacted me and I was happy to be here they? for her. Who's they? Well, I was contacted by, by her. her. By her yes, by her. I was contacted directly by her. She and, you know, I, I, all I, I can't speak for why she didn't contact, you know, A, B, or C lawyers, but well, she contacted me, and I, this is what we do, well, is we well, support women, and I'm honored to support her. I think she's a very sweet person, very caring person, and a person who's been deeply hurt by all of this. So I make no apologies for being here to be supportive of her. What makes Ms. Bryant feel that it's likely, rather than just possible, that he was given drugs without his knowledge? Well, because she never saw him use drugs in her presence, with that one exception of smoking marijuana once. He didn't drink alcohol. He did not commit any act of violence or talk about cannibalism or voodoo during her relationship with him. She saw him frequently. They spent a lot of time together. And she can't imagine that he would do this horrific act knowingly, intentionally, voluntarily, unless somehow his mind had been affected by some type of drug. What is her position on the fact that uh, the police had to shut him to stop? What she, yes. she doesn't have a position on the use of force that the police felt that it was necessary and appropriate to use. She's not going to be commenting on that. Yes? Well, what, why do you keep referring to voodoo? I don't understand the connection between cannibalism and voodoo. Well, I mean, I'm, the, Eugene, uh, it's a fair question. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because there's some chatter on the internet about these kinds of subjects, but no, they never, there is nothing that would have warned her. Did he ever discuss voodoo or some other religious? And that's why I'm was, saying there what, was no what was the, discussion. I don't, I don't know the TV show you referenced. No, pardon me? What, the TV show that you said they watched together on Saturday, is that, is that in is No, that during the week, you mean the Bible ministries? Yeah, what is that? It's a ministry. It's a, it's a television show in, in Florida. Florida. Evangelical? Pardon me? Evangelical Christian? I mean, I, we're not here to characterize that. I, you would have to ask them. Well, you said they read the Quran and Bible together. No, no, no. Well, well the, the Bible, mainly it was the Bible, Bible studies. Is, is there any to us a little bit more about the timeline that maybe your client knows in the hours ahead of this that, that seemed to be? That morning? No. Yeah. Where he was, what, where he was at. Not that morning, no. Has she been in contact with his family, with Rudy's family at all? Um, no, not at this time. But just his friends, but definitely her heart goes out to his family. It's, it, it's terrible, terrible loss. How did they meet? How did they meet? Um, I, I, we're not going to be taking any more questions at this time, but we thank you very much for coming. One last thing, just to follow up. Even though she never saw him use drugs, since then, talking with his friends and the other people that he knew, has she gotten a sense that maybe there was outside drug use, bath salts use, that she wasn't aware of during their relationship? Well, I mean, she's not going to, to, to speculate about, about what he may or may not have done when she was not present, but they spent a great deal of time together and nothing like that happened while she was present. So, I, I, 
Pardon me? How about they meet? Oh, well, I, I, I'm not going into that at this time, but they did meet in March. Thank you very much. We have to go, and thank you very much for coming.